Welcome, everyone. I am Dogstar, the storyteller, and I was just passing through this wonderful academy of Flamboys, and I thought I would stop for a while and tell a few tales for anyone who may be interested. Now, I have three tales to tell you at first, and then we might listen to other stories from around the gathered. Now, if you are all sitting comfortably, I will tell my first tale. The Tale of the Hobbies. In these forests, there once used to be a group of goblins called the Hobbies. You won't see them anymore, though. They were gone a long time ago. Now, let me think now. What, what was the story? Oh, yes. Once there was an old man, a woman, and a little girl. And they all lived in a house made of hemstalks. Now the old man had a little dog named Turpy. Out in the deep forest lived the Hobbies, small little goblin creatures with big goggly eyes and wide mouths and sharp teeth and little clawy hands. The Hobbies came to the house and said, Hobbia, 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 tear down the hem stalks, eat up the old man and the old woman, and carry off the little girl. But little dog Turpy barked so loud that the Hobbias ran off. And the old man woke of a start, Wah! and said, Little dog Turpy, bark so that I cannot sleep nor slumber. And if I live till morning, I will cut off his tail. So in the morning, the old man cut off little dog Turpy's tail. But the next night, the Hobbiers came back and said, Hobbia, 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 tear down the hem stalks, eat up the old man, eat up the old woman, and carry off the little girl. But brave little dog Turpy barked so loud that the Hobbiers ran off. Of course, this woke the old man. Little dog Turpy barks so that I cannot sleep nor slumber. And if I live till tomorrow, I will cut off one of his legs. And so in the morning, the old man cut off one of little dog Turpy's legs. The next night, the Hobbiers returned again. And said, Hobbia, 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 tear down the hem stalks, eat up the old man and the old woman, and carry off the little girl. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Uh, uh. Oh. It's, it's hard to keep this voice going, you know. <clears throat> I should get a glass of water. Does anyone cut a glass of water? Mm-hmm. Anyway, anyway, back to the story. Where was I? Ah, yes, the next night, the Hobbies returned once again and said, Hobbier, 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 tear down the hem stalks, eat up the old man and the old woman, and carry off the little girl. But little dog Turpy barked so loud that the Hobbies again could do nothing but run off in fear. And the old man woke up once again furious. Ah, little dog Turpy! Bark so loud that I cannot sleep nor slumber. Oh, if I live till morning, I'll cut off all of your legs. So in the morning, the old man cut off all of little dog Turpy's legs. Now, I realise there may be some dog lovers here that are absolutely horrified by this tale. But don't worry. There is is a happy ending, I promise. The next night, the Hobbiers came again. And said, Hobbia, 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 tear down the hem stalks, eat up the old man and the old woman, and carry off the little girl. But little dog Turpy barked so loud that the Hobbiers ran off, and the old man woke up again. Little dog Turpy barked so loud that I cannot sleep, nor slumber. And if, what if I live till morning? I shall cut off little dog Turpy's head. So, in the morning, the old man cut off little dog Turpy's head. The next night, 
the hobbyers came again, and they said, Hobbya, Hobbya, Hobbya. Tear down the hemp stalks, eat up the old man and the old woman, and carry off the little girl. And when the hobbyers found that little dog Turpy's head was off, they tore down the hemp stalks, and they ate up the old man, and they ate up the old woman. And then they carried off the little girl in a bag. And when the hobbyers came to their home, they hung up the bag with the little girl in it. And every hobbyer knocked on the top of the bag and said, Look me! Look me! And then they went to sleep until the next night. For the hobbyers slept in the daytime. The little girl cried a great deal. And a man with a big dog came that way and heard her crying. When he asked her how she came to be there, she told him. The man then replaced her with his dog in the bag and took the little girl to safety. The next night, when the hobbyers awoke, they took down the bag and knocked on the top of it and said, Look me! Look me! And when they opened the bag, the big dog jumped out and ate them all up. And so that is why there are no hobbyers now. I can assure you that my following stories, no dogs are harmed. This story is the story of the old witch. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived with her mother and father. Their father had no work. And the girl, as most girls do, wanted to go out into the world and seek her fortune. So she said goodbye to her mother and father and set off to town. Well, she went all about town, but no one wanted a girl like her. So she went on further out into the country and she came to a place where there was an oven baking lots of bread. And the oven spoke. Little girl, little girl, take out the bread. It has been baking inside me for seven years. No one has come to take the bread out. So the girl took out the bread, laid it on the ground, and went on her way. Then she met a cow, and the cow said, Little girl, little girl, milk me, milk me. Seven years I have been waiting, and no one has come to milk me. The little girl milked the cow into pails that stood by. As she was thirsty, she drank some, and then left the rest in the pails for the cow. She bade farewell and went on her way. Soon she came upon an apple tree, so loaded with fruit that its branches were breaking down. And the tree spoke and said, Little girl, little girl, help me shake my fruit. My branches are breaking. It is so heavy. The girl said, Of course I will, you poor tree. So she took the fruit all off propped up the branches and then left the fruit on the ground under the tree. Then she continued on her way till she came to a house. Now this house there lived a witch and this witch took girls into her house as servants. And when she heard that this girl had left her home to seek her fortune she said that she would try and help her and give her good wages. The witch told the girl what work she was to do. You must keep the house clean and tidy. Sweep the floor and fireplace. <clears throat> Wait, Merry that doesn't Christmas. sound like a witch. <clears throat> Let me try a witch. <clears throat> you must keep the house clean and tidy. Sweep the floor and the fireplace. But there is one thing you must never do. You must never look up the chimney. Or something bad will befall you. So the little girl promised to do as she was told. But one morning, as she was cleaning and the witch was out, she forgot what the witch had said. She looked up the chimney. 
When she did, a great bag of money fell down right into her lap. So the girl did what anyone would do. She took the money and ran. When she had gone some way, she heard the witch coming after her. You stole my gold! Ooh, you little rascal! The little girl ran as fast as she could until she saw the apple tree. Apple tree, apple tree, hide me so the old witch can't find me. If she does, she'll pick my bones and bury me <laughs> under the marble stones. So remembering how the little girl had helped it, the apple tree hid the girl. And just in time for the witch arrived. Tree of mine, tree of mine, have you seen a girl with a willy willy wag and a long tailed bag who stole my money, all I had? And the apple tree said, No, ma'am, not for seven years. Oh, she must have gone this way. And off went the witch in the opposite direction. When the witch had gone the opposite direction, the little girl came out of her hiding place, thanked the tree, and continued her run down the path. And just as she got to the cow, she heard the witch coming again. Oh, she's down here somewhere. Oh, that little rascal. Oh. So she ran up to the cow and cried, Cow, cow, hide me, so the old witch can't find me. If she does, she'll pick my bones and bury me under the marble stones, so please, cow, hide me. And the cow remembered how the little girl had helped her, and so hide her, the cow did. When the old witch came up, she looked about and said to the cow, Cow of mine, cow of mine, oh my have God. you seen... A girl with a willy-willy wag and a long-tailed bag who stole my money, all I had. And the cow said, No, ma'am, not for seven years. Oh, said the witch before turning in the opposite direction and stomping off. When the witch was gone, the little girl came out from behind the cow. She thanked the cow for hiding her and continued her run down the path. And as she arrived at the oven, she could hear the witch approaching. Oh, where's that little rascal? I'm glad he's got that gold. And the girl said to the oven, Oh, oven, oven, hide me so the old witch can't find me. If she finds me, she'll break my bones and bury me under the marble stones. And the oven, remembering how she helped it, said to the girl, I'm afraid I have no room. But ask the baker, he might know. And the baker said to her, Hide behind the oven, I've got a plan. When the witch arrived, she was a bit out of breath. <laughs> baker, baker, have you seen have you seen a girl with a willy willy wag and a long tailed bag who stole my money all I had? <laughs> so the baker said to her why not look in the oven right in the oven there look in the oven I'm sure I saw a girl climb into the oven so the old witch being an old witch went and had a look into the oven get in and look a bit further in the corner you know right in the back there said the baker and the witch did so and when she was fully inside, the oven shut its door and cooked the witch until she was no more. See, no dogs were harmed in this story. So thanking the oven and the baker, the little girl set off for home with the big bag of money, which of course she donated to her favourite charities and did not spend it on candy sweets at all. Now my third story is the tale of Troublesome Joe. And it goes something like this. Once there was a boy called Joe, mischievous by nature who often played tricks on others. One sunny day, while playing up a hill, 
Joe found a big cave and went inside to explore. When Joe spoke to the walls, the cave caused his voice to echo and made him sound louder and bigger than he was. And while Joe was in the cave, two men came up the hill. Joe smiled a mischievous grin and used the surrounding cave to echo his voice. Fie, fo, fiddle, fee, if you don't leave this instant, I'll gobble up thee. Who sent that? shouted the men hugging each other in fear. I'm the terrible troll. Leave now or I'll eat you whole, replied Joe from inside the dark cave. You see, the two men could not see Joe in the darkness of the cave, and because the cave made his voice louder, they believed he was a real troll. Oh, please don't eat us, terrible troll. Here, take our bottles of rum to warm your tum and just let us go cried the men as they placed their bottles of drink on the ground. Then they turned and ran. Little Joe came out of the dark cave and picked up the bottles of drink with a smile on his face. This could be fun, he said, as he took a few sips. Now the following day, up the hill a third man strolled from the docks, carrying a cake and some bread in a basket. Fie, fo, fiddle, fee, who goes there, who is thee, came a loud, big, echoing voice from the cave. Oh, please, I know you be the terrible troll. I'll give you my cake if you let me go, said the man. Oh, I do like cake, said Joe from inside the cave. Place it on the ground, then leave with haste. So the man dropped the cake on the ground and quickly ran past the cave. This troll idea, thought Joe. What a remarkable plan. And with that, he spent every night scaring people into giving whatever they can. Soon the terrible troll was all the people of the nearby town spoke about. And a decision was made to find a hunter to get rid of the troll. Herman Benjamin Flubert was a man of great skill in dealing with trolls and monsters. He was an expert on goblins, fairies, and all things strange. The townspeople cheered at his arrival and hoped he could rid them of this terrible troll. The next morning, just as the sun started to rise, Herman Benjamin Flubert started up the hill to find the terrible troll. He hid in a bush near the cave and waited for the troll to appear. But Herman, the troll hunter, was surprised to see a young Joe skipping along the path and enter the cave. From his hiding place, Herman watched as troublesome Joe pretended to be a troll and tricked people into leaving things so they could pass the cave. Oh, what a cruel boy, thought the troll hunter, scaring people to get all he wants. The troll hunter smiled to himself as he thought of a plan that would teach others like Joe a lesson they would never forget. He stepped out from his hiding place and walked towards the cave. Fie, fo, fiddle, fee, what have you to give to me? echoed the voice from inside the cave. Oh, terrible troll, I have nothing on me except this map and key to my gold. Please don't eat me. From inside the cave, Joe's eyes widened at the thought of that gold. Place it on the ground and leave, or I'll gobble you up, shouted the boy. Oh, I'm uh, ooh, I'm, I'm so scared for my life. Uh, oh, great terrible troll, said the troll hunter as he dropped the map and key, then turned and calmly walked back to the town. The townspeople saw the troll hunter arrive and surrounded him with anticipation. People of the town, you have nothing to fear. The terrible troll is gone. He will no longer scare anyone. The townspeople cheered and celebrated with joy. But on the other side of the mountain, Troublesome Joe climbed as he followed the map. Eventually, (laughs) he found a hidden door in the side of a mountain. And after using the key, the door opened with a loud creak. Through the old door, down into the mountain, around many corners into the darkness, the map took the boy. 
He jumped over deep holes, broke through giant spider webs, and although a little scared, Joe carried on because he really wanted that gold and all the things it could buy him. Like a new hat, perhaps, or uh, maybe some fizzle swabbles, and maybe a little bit of tutti from nopples. Oh, I love those. Anyway, <clears throat> finally, Joe came across a wall with a big marking. And when he touched it, the wall fell apart. Joe went tumbling into the room, falling flat on his face at the feet of some large, very real trolls. They were very tall, with big round bellies, and had big rotten teeth and big runny noses. They looked down at little Joe and licked their big lips with glee. Well, what do we have here? said the first great troll. It looks like lunch, said the second troll. I saw him first, said the third troll. Get off him, he's mine, said a fourth and fifth. And soon there was a large brawl between the trolls over who would get to gobble down the troublesome Joe. Now, it was hard to tell which troll it was, but soon there was a large burp, which echoed around the cave. And from inside a troll, the naughty, troublesome Joe knew he could not be saved. And that, my dear friends, is the end of my tales. Some stories don't have happy ever afters. The point of telling tales is often one of lessons to be learnt, and I hope my tales have given you wisdom of one type or another. I thank you all for your attention this evening, and now I think it is time that we see what other stories others have to tell, and the wisdom they might give.